is up, everybody? Mystery Girl here. Hi, welcome back to... Welcome to, uh, this game. It is called Mystic Destinies, uh, Serendipity of Aeons. I found this game on Steam for free, so this looks pretty cool. Uh, the Fruit of Grisaia will come back. I have to, again, uh, get it to the point where we left off, and that's going to take a little time, both on, uh, <sighs> both on Abara Hunter and the Fruit of Grisaia. So I will take my time to get all that fixed, so I hope you enjoyed Cinderella Escape Part 1. Part 2 will come out next week. So let's get into this game. This looks really cool. Enter first name. How about... Mystery. And enter. Enter last name. Fujimoto. I like it. Yes, I am very happy with Mystery Fujimoto. Today, my first year of undergraduate studies become begins at Hagawara University. Yay! Let me see here. If you guys can hear that, okay? Let me know. I made sure to get here early so I could make it on time to my first lecture. But somehow I managed to get horribly lost. I'd climb the stairs to look for my classroom on the second floor, but I couldn't find it. I turned to go back down, still reading the map. Suddenly, I collided into something, or rather someone. Whoa! Whoa! I lose my balance and throw out my arms to catch myself. My things fly out of my hands, scattered all over the steps. But the guy I ran into puts out his arm to catch me before I fall forward. Over his shoulder, shoulder, <coughs> he is me. Over his shoulder, I can see the contents of my bag that have been appended. I click my tongue to try to move together, them, but then I realize this guy still has his arm around my waist. I go back to look at him and our eyes meet. Are you okay? Yeah, thanks for catching me, but could you let me go now? Oh yeah, sorry. He lets go of my waist hastily and takes a small step back. Here, let me pick those up for you. He bends down to gather my things before they get stepped on by the passerbyers. I'm Shao. He picks up my map and looks at it before hitting everything to me. Is this your first year here? Yeah. Then welcome. It's my second year here myself. He taps a line on my class schedule. If you were looking for this, you just passed it. Look back down the hall on the left. Oh, gosh darn it. Sorry about that, guys. I forgot to pun do not disturb on Skype. Dang, flip. God, man. I keep forgetting stuff like that. So... If you were looking for this, you just passed it. Look down the hall on the left. Oh! Thanks! I've barely taken the paper back before Shao grabbed my wrist to look at my watch. Oh crap, I re just realized the next class is on the other side of the campus. I got a jet, see ya! Before I fully realized what's happening, Shao has turned around and is sprinting away. What was that all about? But since I'm about to be late for class, I don't have much time to wander. Pushing Xiao out of my mind, I start running towards class myself. Ooh. After morning, morning of class, it's finally lunchtime. I'm at the counter paying for my food, or at least I'm supposed to be. When I reach in my bag, I grope around for my wallet, but I can't find it. The cashier stares at me, wholly unimpressed with my lack of preparation. Oh no. 
Don't tell me I lost it! I'm starting to panic when a black leather wallet is thrust in front of my face. Is this yours? I'm not actually sure at first until I see the small star-shaped charm hanging off it. I feel immense relief as I take the wallet. Oh good, what a rel- that's a relief! I was looking everywhere for you. Thank you, I thought I'd lost it for good. Is there any- Don't worry about it. You're cute enough that it's payment enough for me to you smile. Uh, he looks expectant enough that I managed to pull my lips into some semblance of a smile. Looking strangely satisfied, he points to the annoyed cashier before hopping over the line's railing. Completely flustered, I shake my head to clear it. I quickly turn around to pay for my food and take my tray to head outside. Um, honestly. <sniffs> Sorry guys, my nose has been stuffy lately. Uh, I've been cooped up all day. I need some fresh air. I step outside into sunshine as a chilly breeze passes through, right through me. I shiver involuntarily, but it feels refreshing. Thankfully, it also means that there's hardly anyone outside. I sit on a bench on the grass and relax as I admire the campus scenery. But then I hear a voice nearby. Slowly stop. I slowly stop chewing and looked around to identify the voice. Ah, oh, come on! Don't be ridiculous! There was no way that actually happened! The male's voice is laughing and energetic. Yeah, I see no one around. It sounds like someone talking on the phone. Whatever it is, it's kind of annoying. Someone moves into view near the flowers. They seem to be looking at nothing in particular. <laughs> fine, fine, I believe you. You don't have to look so annoyed. Uh, I've spotted the mystery man. I wonder what's so funny. <coughs> Arnold, holy crap! Wait, that wasn't my phone. Oh! <laughs> that was pretty cool. Started by the startled by the sudden sound of the phone ringing, I nearly choked on my food. Uh huh? I slowly, almost fearfully, look over the guy I thought was talking on the phone and see him pull out one, pull one out of his pocket. He checks it and then puts it away, all oh, while happily talking to nothing. I'm wondering what just happened when I noticed that the man was looking at me. Maybe you should brush up on your spying skills if you want to listen in on people. I quickly turned back around. Okay. I tried to ignore the weird guy and managed to finish eating my lunch in relative peace. When I get to my apartment, I open up my laptop. I want to sign up for the business club I heard about before <laughs> My phone vibrates before I can do much, though. I take it out and realize there is a rare email from my mother. Ooh, this is cool! Looks like we got an iPhone! Uh, to Hiroshinamaru to you. How was your first week of school? Is everything going well? You left your laptop charger here. I'll be at home Saturday, so could you come get it then? I'd like to take you out to a nice restaurant to celebrate your first week. Mom. Oh, of course I left something important at home. And I was trying to be so careful about everything. The end of the email was a bit strange, though. She's never really been the type to celebrate things. Regardless of my thoughts, I type a reply that I, I'll be there on Saturday. The strange feeling the email gave me never goes away. The next day, I managed to get through classes without getting lost. I finished classes for today, and I'm headed to the first meeting of the business club. Room 129. There it is! I push the door open. As soon as I do, a black haired man turns to face me. Welcome to the. He stops his sentence and stares at me. I was struck silent for an entirely different reason. Man has strikingly aqua colored eyes. We stare at each other for a few minutes before a voice from behind me interrupts. Hey, come on! Let me in! Flustered, I hurry to move out of the way and step into the classroom. As the man goes by, I recognize his distinctive hair. Oh, well, that's the weird guy who was talking to himself. I glance at the black-haired man again and he turned away from me. I turn to face the class and lock eyes with a young-looking guy in yellow. 
Is that the guy from the cafeteria? He gives me a big smile that strikes me as suddenly familiar. Weird, I feel like I know him from somewhere. He fits his leg he lifts his legs up and jumps to his feet in one fluid movement. Then he turns to the newcomer. Hey, Shinji! I came here to talk to you. Oh, oh, I forgot about that. I'll lend you that book next week, Takumi. Huh? It's not about the book, it's... Excuse me, please don't block the walkway. I hear an inter irritated voice behind me. I turn to look equally irritated at his roots. Ooh, blue hair. <laughs> Love it for sight already, Tatsuya. Sh shut up, Shinji. I immediately move away from the door and go to sit down. A few moments after I do, someone starts yelling. No! The peaches are running away! Huh? I look over to where I heard the voice and see a guy in a bright orange hoodie sleeping on the couch. Is that... I think he's... It was Shao? What the heck? Why is he here? I'm not really sure. He did stay up pretty late participating for, for a part he just got through. So I guess nothing. I think he said something about wanting to join the club. Whatever, let's just start the meeting. Thanks for watching the club for me, Professor Kazama. Matsuya turns around, but the professor is gone. How did he slip out without anyone noticing? But no one else seemed to think it's all that strange. <coughs> the meeting commences without any further weirdness, though I'm surprised at how small it is. Since it seems like we have some new members this year, maybe we should start this meeting by introducing ourselves. I'm Tutsu Tatsuya Yukimura, the, cl the club president and a third year. I'm Shinji Hiram Hirayama, a third year. I've been a member of this club for a long time. Though I think everyone here probably already knows me, I'm Takumi Ari, or Taku for short. It's my first year here, but I'm not actually even a part of this club. Who's <laughs> next? I bro at Takumi's introduction. So why is he even here? I look at Shao and Tatsuya kicks and Tatsuya kicks kicks the couch. What is wrong with me? Shao startles awake. Huh? Where am I? At the business club you were talking about joining. Huh? Oh oh. We're doing introductions and it's your turn. Oh, right! I'm Shao Hattori, a second year. I just joined the club. My acting teacher told me if I want to become an actor, it's good to get some understanding with how business works. So, here I am! Everything looks at me expectantly and I stand up and slightly bow. I'm Mystery Fujimoto. It's my first year here. It's nice to meet you all. I sit back down and Tatsuya starts going over what the purpose of this club is and the kinds of things we'll be doing in it. But every now and then I see the purple-gray haired guy Shinji glance at me. What am I like super attractive today? Eventually the meeting is over and I stand up and grab my bag. But Shinji walks slowly up to me like he's in a daze and stares me in the face. You're not. What? Jeez, is there something on my face? <sighs> Suddenly, Shinji watch just walks past just past me, as if I don't exist at all. It's Saturday, and I've gotten lost a few times. But I finally found the coffee house Mother wanted me to meet her at. I spotted her immediately as I entered, sitting at one of the tables by the window. Mother looks as put together as ever. That's our mother? I walk up to her table. She only gives me one of her inscrutable expressions. Hello, Mother. I'm sorry I'm late. I got a little lost on the way. As I take my seat, I realize she's already ordered something for me. Mother looks at me over her teacup with that usual half-smile of hers. I did not wait long, but I did wonder if you would be able to find this place. I know it is a little out of the way. Most people don't know much about this district. I eventually figured it out. So, um, I didn't know you were 
you frequented places like this. Mother gently places her teacup on the table. The eerie color of her eyes always makes me feel like she can see right through me. For a moment, I feel like I'm ten again, being judged to see if I'm worthy of knowledge. I don't. But a very old friend of mine owns this place. I wanted to come see it at least once. An old friend? Now I'm curious, though. I doubt she'd actually tell me more. Oh, I see. An uncomfortable silence settles upon us, as usual. And as usual, I start rambling. So, school has been great. I even joined a club. Oh, but how are Dad and Kao doing? <laughs> hmm. Your sister began school. She apparently made a friend, a very nice boy. And Rokuro is out of the country on business this week. Having nothing else to say, the conversation quickly dies down. I look out the window as I quietly sip my tea. Lunch with mother. It's not even a bit awkward. Nope. But at least Keo has a new friend. I hold back a sigh. Mystery. I must admit, I asked you to meet me here for a reason. There is somewhere I want to take you. I've been meaning to ever since we came back to Japan. Will you come with me? Huh? She seemed sad. It's really strange to see my always controlled mother let any emotion slip. I'm left speechless, but I can't hide the curiosity bubbling up inside me. She almost never wants to share anything with me, so this has to be something huge. Of course, Mother. I'll go with you. After we finish eating, I follow Mother out of the coffee house. Her high heels click against the pavement as she walks in front of me. It's just the same. Even though I'm 20, I still feel like a child. Always following, never catching up, but maybe now she sees me as an adult. Maybe things will be different from now on. It's with these thoughts that I eagerly get in her car. I sit in the car beside my mother, looking out the window. Maybe if I ask, she'll tell me where we're going. For once? I say, knowing she'll just evade the question if she doesn't want to answer it. If she wants me to know, she would have told me. I seek a glance at her. Her knuckles are white from how hard she's gripped the steering wheel. And there's a somber expression on her face that I can't quite place. Seeing her, of all people, so unsettled makes me beyond anxious. Mother, where are you taking me? Um, uh, Mother? I yes. Where are we going? I can't keep the nervousness out of my voice, and Mother seems to pick up on it, as she usually does. There is no need to concern yourself. I sit back in the seat with a sigh. I knew she wasn't going to tell me, but unexpectedly, Mother keeps talking. We are going to the countryside. I will explain more when we get there, but please, just relax and make yourself comfortable. The countryside? I guess it might be a few hours then. I can't believe she's even said that much, though. I settled in my seat for a long ride, feel like I might have a small breakthrough with my mother. After a very quiet car ride, we finally stop at a house in the country. I stepped outside of the car in amazement. A traditional home. Whose house is this? A gentle breeze sways through the tall field, rippling through the blade of grass. It makes such a pleasant sound, and it smells so good out here that my nerves are somewhat calmed. It's beautiful out here. Yes, it is. Mother walks ahead of me with a key and unlocks the door to the house. I hesitate for a moment, not wanting to go inside. The sunset is so beautiful. But I can't keep Mother waiting. Maybe I can come outside later. Regretfully, I walk into the house ahead of Mother, who follows me in and shuts the door. Wait here. I will bring us some refreshments. Okay. Mother leaves before I can finish the sentence. Alone in the room, I sit down at the table. Not sure where we are. But it's very peaceful out here. The sounds of the door sliding open distracts me from my thoughts. Mother comes in carrying a tray of snacks and some tea. She glides across the room and gently places the tray on the table in front of me. Now we can have our chat a little more comfortable. Thank you. Mother sits down on the other side of the table. I'm sure you're wondering what this place is and why I brought you here. Of course. For a few moments, you sit in silence. Mother seems to be thinking about how to say it. This house is built on the land my ancestors lived on hundreds of years ago. They lived and worked here. They spilled blood here. 
Anyway, she says it sends a faint chill down my spine. I wanted to bring you here, to show you this place that's so full of history. There aren't many things left here from that time, but I thought you would enjoy seeing it anyway. She takes a small sip of her cup and I follow suit. A pleasant warmth washes over my body. Thank you for the tea, it's very good. Can you sh show me around a bit? Uh, a wave of dizziness hits me like a ton of bricks. As the world starts to spin, I have a physically hold off the table. Mystery, are you alright? I, uh, I don't feel well. Everything keeps spinning and my vision goes black. I open my eyes and I see the moon hanging up high in the sky above me. Skies. Wait, huh? Where the heck am I? I try to move, but my body is completely unresponsive. What is this? What is going on? Why can't I move? Help! Help me, someone, please! I'm panicking, but I can hear someone coming closer. They're muttering, muttering under their breath. Up alright? I knew I should have used more potion. Did they say potion? Help me, please! So help! Someone says it's useless to shout, you know. No one will hear you. But don't worry. This will be over soon. What? what, what? Who are you? What's going on? Another sigh, then footsteps. A familiar face comes into view. Mother stands over me, her eyes glowing. But mother, what? I told you, it's going to be over soon. Mother snaps her fingers, as if I was a marionette on strings my body plays along, sitting up on its own. I can see a strange chalk circle outlined on the ground around us. Her heels click against the stone. She walks to something that looks suspiciously like an altar of some sort. Please explain! What have you done to me? Why? How? I can see her eyes start towards me momentarily as she continues to work. She places various crystals along the chalk outline. My heart is beating impossibly fast. I try to stay cal calm as, pos as I possibly can. I suppose I should explain. It's only fair. She stops and looks at me. I am, I am many things. My true name is Shizuka. I am the last living sorceress. A mistake rendered me cursed, unable to die. What? But how is that even possible? I want to doubt her words to simply write this all away as a weird dream, but it feels real. Too real. She laughs and continues her strange preparations. The curse of immortality is immortal as well. Of course it would be like that. It's almost funny. It might have been an accident, but considering who he is, it makes perfect sense. Huh? For centuries, I have searched for a way to undo the curse. I thought it hopeless until a friend told me a way I could finally be rid of it. <sighs> Heather continues to carefully place crystals in a circle around me. The only way it would work, however, is if I completed the ritual on a very specific day, and if I had someone very specific to transfer the curse onto. With a momentary, she pauses, glance at me. A daughter? No, not a daughter. A humunculus, the perfect copy of my physical self, so I created you. I am not your mother. I am the alchemist who made you. Any words I could say get stuck in my throat. I feel like I'm going to pass out again. This has to be some sick joke. This can't be real. This is all just a terrible dream. I just need to wake up and I'll be back in my bedroom. But... If this, by some insane chance, is real, there are some things I want to know. Who was it who cursed you? Just how old are you anyway? A god, so ancient he no longer remembers his own name. As for my age, I am over 700 years old. That's a long time. There are a million more things I want to pass, but Shizuka carefully places the last crystal. Chalk outline suddenly grow glows an eerie green. Oh, wait, stop! With a wave of her hand, my lips snapped shut. Now completely paralyzed, all I can do is watch. Shizuka kneels in front of me. She takes out a small vial of some strange liquid. It looks like billions of tiny shimmering stars gently swirling together in a tiny bottle. She quickly downs it. Ugh, that tasted about as bad as I expected. 
Suzuka stares at me, and I can see the green in her eyes start to swirl and change into brown. I feel a sharp pain in mine at the same time. I want to scream as the pain spreads from my eyes to the rest of my body. But since I can't move, all I can do is scream in my head. It hurts. So much, please make it stop. As my vision darkens, I see Shizuka stand up, her eyes now completely brown. I'm sorry. I can barely hear her whisper the words. She disappears from my vision, the world grows dark. Uh, I grab my head that's throbbing with pain. Where am I? I'm so groggy I can scarcely remember my own name, much less what happened yesterday. I managed to force my eyes open and ease myself up into a sitting position. Holding my head still, I go back through everything I remember. I went to school, then I met mother for lunch on Saturday. Flashes of strange images suddenly come to mind. A strange house I didn't know my mother owned. Having tea by the setting sun. Then last, the feeling of helplessness, fear, and confusion while my mother made strange preparations under a full moon. And of course, brief, but excruciating pain. I laughed nervously. Holy crap, look! Look at my eyes! They are completely different. That's right. Must have been a dream. I can't shake the negative feelings the dream gave me, though, or my grogginess. Somehow, though, I managed to push myself out of bed. I check my phone screen. I notice there's an email notification from the school. But more importantly, crap, I have to get to school. I rush to get dressed and grab some pain relievers before I run out the door. While waiting for a traffic light to change, I check my phone. Curious, I opened the mail I saw earlier. You have been added to Intro to Mystical Studies 101. Please follow the instructions below to find your class. What? I think back, but I don't remember requesting any such class. Mystical Studies? Is that like r religion or something? Class starts almost immediately after my last one of the day, so I won't have time to find out about it. I'll just go talk to the teacher and figure it out later. The light turns green and I put my phone away. Yeah, I won't worry about all this weird stuff. I'll just keep focused on what I need to do today. Despite my best efforts, my headache never went away. But all my classes were done in for the day. Well, except for one. I go into the elevator to look for the buttons of the basement as the instructions said. I didn't even know this place had a basement. I finger over elevator buttons. Hmm? I hover my fingers over nothing, feel like feeling like an idiot. But then the air shimmers around my hand. A button appears in the empty space with a symbol indicating basement. What just happened? Okay, okay, mystery. Just calm down. You're probably just tired of seeing things. I firmly cuff all other thoughts forming in my mind and press the button. I step out into the hallway that looks like something out of a fantasy movie. Ooh. Okay, this is going getting so weird that even I'm starting to have trouble ignoring it. I'm nervous now. There aren't any students that I can see, and I'm a little intimidated by the dimly lit hall. I slowly walk down the corridor. The rooms are sparse and few between, leading me to wonder just how big the rooms are. Finally, I stopped in front of a large door. I take a deep breath to gather my courage. I push it open. A black-haired man turned to look at me. I got an intense sensation of deja vu. Are you Professor Kazama? <sniffs> so, there you are, Fujimoto. Um, s sorry I'm late. It took me longer than I thought to get here. No worries. It's your first day. Have a seat. I do as I'm told, I scan the room quickly and find an empty seat in the strange classroom. Wait, did I just... I could swear that I just saw some familiar people in the class, but it would be rude to look around, so I just face forward. Oh, I forgot to ask if I should be in this class. Oh, well, I'm curious if, as to what it's about. Professor Kazama walked up to me and hands me a syllabus. When I look down at it, I'm not sure if it's a joke or not. Objective, understand early magical history, understand basis of advanced magical theory, demonstrate mastery of basic magical techniques. What is this? But 
By then, the professor had already walked away back to the front of the class of the room. He launches into a lecture on something called the Unseen World. Everyone around me looks as if this is nothing new, but I keep waiting for the punchline. It's more correct to call the Unseen World multiple realms. Most supernatural beings live within the hidden pocket of the human realm, but there are at least nine different realms that we know of. I'm trying to keep my focus on the lecture, but I'm kind of freaking out. What Professor Kazama is saying sounds insane, yet no one around me is reacting to it. On top of everything, there are windows in this class, in the base, in a basement, and they're showing some kind of mountain scenery. None of this makes any sense. I feel like I have to get out of the room, or I'll lose my mind. But though, through force, I will manage to keep it together until the end of class. That's when the professor asked me to come up to the front of the room. Fujimoto, would you come up to the front of the class? I'd like you to provide a demonstration of your power for us. Huh? I walked up to the front slowly in a complete daze. This will be your home room for your magical classes. But I've been asked to see what you can do so we can better place you in the rest of your classes. I, I have no idea what's, what's going on here, but... I think you have the wrong girl. You mean you really have no idea what any of this is about? No, I don't. Well, maybe the fastest way for you to understand is through a first-hand experience. The fat professor Kazama places one of his hands out towards me, palm up. A, smash a small sphere of light forms over it, and I can't believe what I'm seeing. What? What is going on here? Generally scared, I take a few steps back amidst the murmurs of the class. Here goes! Kazuma pulls his hand back, aiming the sphere right at me. How? Why is this happening? What do I do? My fear, stress, and confusion with the entire situation finally come at a boiling point. The splitting headache I've had all day is just icing on the cake. All of a sudden, more than anything else, I'm ticked off. A hot feeling bubbles up inside me, and I feel like I'm going to burn up. Painfully bright light surrounds me. I can barely understand what's happening as Cosmo throws the sphere at me. Holy crap. I'm aware of the sensation of cold, hard stone underneath me. I feel extremely worn out, like I can't even move my head. But I also notice my he headache is gone. For some reason I smell smoke and I struggle to open my eyes. I see two surprising people around me, from the business club of all places. The one kneeling next to me is... Shao. And the one standing looking down at me is... Tetsuya. What are they doing here? I also see many students standing around. Farther away, I see a beautiful woman tending to Kazuma, who is holding his hand. Sorry about that, Luce. Just... Try not to get yourself blown up again for a while, Hikaru. So his name's Higuru. Something about the name strikes me as being right far more than Kazuma. <clears throat> what does she mean by blow up? That's when the previous events all came rushing back to me. I try to sit up. The child puts a hand on my shoulder. Don't overdo it. Just lie down. You must be exhausted after releasing so much power. Power? Just then Shinji walks over. He's here too. What the heck is going on? That's right, you kind of blew up the classroom. Yeah, sorry about that. I turned to see Hikaru walk up to the group. Despite what Xiao had said, I managed to push myself up anyway. I really underestimated you. Thankfully, I managed to shield everyone in time, but my hand in the classroom didn't get off so easily. I looked down at his hand. It's covered in bandages. I feel distantly horrified and so confused. I did that? You did. I know it's on pur it wasn't on purpose, but that just makes you even more dangerous. I don't know how you awakened so suddenly and with so much power, but you're too dangerous right now to others and yourself. You need to partner with someone you until you can get your powers under control. What do you mean partner with someone? I don't even understand where those where these supposed powers came from. Then it hits me, my mother, the ritual. Somehow it wasn't a dream. Regardless, you need a lot more instruction than just a class every evening. 
You need someone who will be able to help you learn the basics and protect themselves from you. Professor Kazuma looks around at the guy surrounding me. Since the young men seem to be interested in you, maybe you could choose one of them? Every one of them is trustworthy. I know you'll be able to rely on them. What? Seriously, Mr. K? You have got to be kidding me. I don't have time to babysit anyone. If she needs help, I don't mind. Consider it an assignment. I'll grade you on it and everything if you want. But Fujimoto, your powers are far too volatile to be left alone. I know it's a lot to ask, but please make your decision now. What? I have to buy a story? What the? Wow. Okay. Yeah, that was... Uh, wow. <laughs> so, that was Mystic Destiny's Serpentity of Aeons. Uh, this is... That was actually just a prologue. I'll see how much it costs for the stories, but if any of the guys you want me to partner up with, let me know, because holy crap, this game, wow. <laughs> maybe you guys can do this in your own personal time, maybe you can do this uh, in a video that you want, but I mean, Mystic Destiny is holy crap, just enthralled with it, uh, being called a homunculus for something of our own mother it, deeply for me that is just wow 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 <laughs> so i want to thank you guys so much for watching this big episode of mystic destinies maybe i'll do more we will see so I want to thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you all later. Stay frosty! Bye! See you next time!